Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3007 uh, at the University of Western Australia. We're talking about approximate wave functions. A few lectures ago we talked about the Hartree-Fock wave function, and that is a Hartree product uh, of orbitals. Each orbital is a function of one electron's coordinates, and we make this product wave function anti-symmetric by looking at all possible uh, coordinate switches in that product wave function times a phase factor according to whether the permutation of the electron coordinates is even or odd. If it's odd we have a minus sign, if we have an even permutation we have a plus sign. And the operation which does this anti-symmetrizing, this swapping of electron coordinates with reversal of signs to force the Pauli principle, the operator that does that we learned was the anti-symmetrizer. So we're going to talk about properties of this anti-symmetrizer which we will need to have in order to calculate matrix elements using this wave function. Remember we need these matrix elements to do calculations. So let's begin by looking at properties of the anti-symmetrizer. So here it is again, the anti-symmetrizer A. Um, it swaps electron coordinate labels around with a sign change, as I said. So um, here it is, it's uh, a normalization factor, which is uh, 1 divided by the square root of n factorial here. That should be a square root. Oh, so many mistakes. Keeps you on your toes. And we have here a sum over all n factorial terms in, uh, of permutations because uh, if we have uh, four labels, we have four factorial possible permutations that we can do. So this sums over all permutations uh, labeled by P, U. P1 is the first permutation, which would be an, a no permutation, P2, P3 or whatever. And here is the phase factor. Don't be confused by this P. It's not a projection operator as occurs in previous lectures. Here it represents a permutation operator. Okay, what do we want to say about this? We have this theorem which we really need, and that is if we perform the anti-symmetrizer twice, it is the same as doing the anti-symmetrizer once, except we have to multiply by the square root of n factorial. Now, if a squared was equal to a, a would be a projection operator. So this is very nearly a projection operator. It's, it's essentially a projection operator except for a small factor here, which is interesting. Right, I want to prove that result. So let's hang tight and let's go for it. So here's the proof. And we're just going to substitute in for a and do a proof. So here's a squared. And uh, here are the two uh, definitions of A. So it's 1 on square root of n factorial squared. So that gives you 1 on n factorial. Now this is the correct factor. And here we have the first anti-symmetrizer, summed over all permutations PU, and the second anti-symmetrizer, summed over all permutations PV. And that is a typographical error there too. Okay, so that's fine. We have a double sum and we can take the summations out the front and we can uh, move these phase factors around so I've moved them so that they're next to each other. Uh, we've got to be a little bit careful with operators because remember they may commute or they may not. So we shouldn't really swap these two PU and PV around so we'll just leave them in the, in the same order. Now, uh, essentially what we have here is a sum over two lots of permutations, and here is a product of permutations. Now, I'm going to rely on the fact that if you, per you realize that if you do one permutation and then another permutation, the result is a third permutation, believe it or not. So the product of two permutations is a third permutation. I'm going to call that PW. Let's think about this PW. Uh, PW is equal to PU times PV. Now PV uh, is summing over all possible permutations. 
and in front of that we're permuting all of those again by one permutation PU. It turns out that if you do one permutation over a set of all permutations you will end up with again the set of all permutations. So for example if I have all if I have three objects and I permute them in all possible ways that would be six permutations if I now decide to permute the first two of them in all six of those I will end up with six different permutations in a different order. So in other words uh, PU times PV which is PW running over all permutations V is the same as doing all permutations. So I'm going to call that PW and the phase of that permutation is simply the product of the two phases or um, signs of the two individual permutations EW. So if they're both odd that would be an even permutation plus one. If they're both even they stay even. If one's even, one odd, this would be a negative sign. And that's exactly what we expect. Okay, so now this sum over V can be replaced by sum over W. So here with sum over V, PU, PV, for a particular U, summed over here, we can replace this V by sum over W because running over all permutations V would be the same as running over all permutations W. You have to think about this. Okay, so here, in this term, we have something that looks like an anti-symmetrizer, summed over W. And this first summation has nothing to do with W. It's a sum over U. Wow. So we've got a sum over N factorial terms over U, which has nothing to do with the second term. So in actual fact, we're just adding together n factorial terms which are identical. So we can get rid of this sum over u and replace it by a factor n factorial, leaving only the last term. The two n factorials cancel, and we are left with just this summation. And the only difference between that summation and the anti-symmetrizer is the factor of the square root of n factorial. So that's where this factor this factor comes in remember from the previous definition over here there is a square root of n factorial over here with this typographical error over here so that proves the theorem okay the key part of this proof is the third last line where if you do one permutation times uh, a list of all other permutations we run over all those permutations that's the key part of the argument and you have to think about that. Apart from that, it's a relatively straightforward proof. I hope you understood that. See you later.